Hi, I'm Dr. Arthi Thungadu. I'm a physician who focuses on diabetes, thyroid, and other metabolic and hormonal diseases. Thanks so much for being here today. We're here on our next video on hypothyroidism. If you haven't already, please check out my video on Hashimoto's hypothyroidism, symptoms of hypothyroidism, lab evaluation of hypothyroidism, and medications for hypothyroidism. Today we're going to talk about supplements and diet and hypothyroidism. So let's get into it. First, iodine. That is the first thing that most people think of when they think about supplementation with hypothyroidism. The RDA for iodine for non-pregnant adults is 150 micrograms. Too little or too much iodine is bad for the thyroid. The problem though is that there are several supplements available that are excessive doses of iodine. Excessive doses of iodine can affect the thyroid in unpredictable ways. They can cause profound hypothyroidism and profound hyperthyroidism. They can throw you into thyrotoxicosis, and I've even seen patients in the hospital due to iodine excess. In the US, most people can get sufficient iodine from their diet, especially if they use iodized salt. Next, selenium. Selenium is necessary for thyroid hormone production. Again, excessive doses of selenium are not recommended. There are dietary sources of selenium, such as Brazil nuts. There are also several thyroid supplements out there that contain active thyroid hormone. These are unregulated by the FDA, and there is no safety or efficacy data on these. Also, when supplements are not regulated by the FDA, like our medications that we prescribe are, they don't have to contain what they say they do on the label. I recommend using these with a lot of caution if you use them at all. Now let's talk about food. First, soy. There is some talk about soy and thyroid. The evidence to date suggests that soy can impair absorption of thyroid hormone supplementation. So if you have a high soy diet, you may need to increase your doses of thyroid medication if you are taking it. From what we know so far, soy does not impair thyroid function on its own. Next, cruciferous vegetables. While cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, those kinds of things do contain some compounds that may affect the thyroid. To date, we don't have any evidence in human data that suggests that cruciferous vegetables are bad for the thyroid or that they impair thyroid function. These are very healthy foods, and based on what we know, there's no reason to be avoiding them if you have hypothyroidism. And lastly, gluten. Celiac disease is an autoimmune disease. Hashimoto's hypothyroidism is also an autoimmune disease. When you have one autoimmune disease, you are more likely to have other autoimmune diseases. So if you have Hashimoto's hypothyroidism, you may have higher risk of having celiac disease. So if you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis and you have celiac disease, then yes, you should avoid gluten. However, if you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis and you do not have celiac disease and you feel just fine eating gluten, there is no reason to cut out gluten for the sake of your thyroid. We do not have any evidence showing that a gluten-free diet improves thyroid function. So, as an overview, there is no supplement that you need if you have hypothyroidism. And also, there is no specific diet with strong evidence to support its use in hypothyroidism. Generally, a healthful lifestyle with a wholesome diet, exercise, good sleep, stress management, all of these things can significantly improve symptoms associated with hypothyroidism. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and share with anyone who you think might benefit from this information. I'm here for you. Thanks so much and see you next time.